start the recording so let me quickly start with the session so guys welcome to nasik news of meter 5 and the topic for today's session is json logger and like how we can externalize the log you know using a various approaches so raul will going to discuss those thing okay before i move into session uh, we will just talk about the safe harbor statement both the speaker and the host organizing this meetup in the individual capacity only we are not representing any companies here this presentation is strictly for the learning purpose and we are not holding any responsibility like that same solution will work for your comment and the presentation is not mean for any promotional activities housekeeping the recording of this meetup will be uploaded to event page within 24 hours you can submit the question at any time in the chat or question or answer tab make it more interactive and it like it is always helpful if you can provide the feedback at the end of the session basically you will receive a mail on that mail you will receive the uh, receiver link and you can click on that link and you can provide the feedback yeah, organizer myself jitendra you so i will not i will just skip my introduction So Raul, would you like to introduce you, yourself? You can share your screen, and you can take it the session from here. Yeah, perfect. I'll do that. Yeah, sure. All right. Uh, thank you, Jitendra. So let me quickly share my screen. Please let me know if you, if you can see my screen. Yes. Perfect. Uh, thank you, Jitendra. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining. Uh, so today we'll discuss a bit about logging json logger and how to externalize our logs uh, but before that let me quickly introduce myself uh, my name is rahul shalke uh, i i'm a senior mules of consultant at devo team uk i live in london and in my free time uh, usually i like to watch uh, documentaries and sports uh, nice to meet you all uh, so let's get started so today's agenda so uh, as we just said i mean we'll uh, we'll discuss a bit about logging uh, json logger how to use json logger in our mule applications and externalizing logs like what is externalizing logs and how we can externalize our logs uh, using json logger uh, then i have put together a small demo uh, demonstrating all this so we'll go through that as well uh, so after the demo uh, there is a small uh, trivia quiz so where you can answer and win exciting uh gifts and then after that uh, finally we have a we'll open floor for q and a so if you have any questions please feel free to ask i'll be more than happy to answer uh yeah so this is so after in the end of our session so we have a small trivia quiz where you can answer the questions and win exciting gifts so let's get start with our session uh so logging and uh, json logger so as as a developers we all know how important logging is so in order to debug any issues in our applications or track a particular transaction or monitor our applications all sort of things so generally logging serves all these purposes so you can track a particular transaction in our application so let's say uh, in mule so we have three different layers like experience layer process layer and system layer and if you want to track any of the transactions throughout all three layers so logging Uh, is the best way to do it and then debugging any errors so if there are any errors in our in our mule applications uh, so we can use our logs to debug them and fix them quickly and then creating dashboards so if you format your logs properly so then you can uh, use those logs to create different dashboards uh, using these dashboards you can analyze your logs and uh, the execute if there are any business plans properly and then monitoring and troubleshooting applications using these logs you can monitor our mule applications uh, like what is the performance of it uh, what is the cpu utilization and uh, uh, garbage collection etc so logging is really important to do all this uh, and what is a json logger so the name itself suggest json logger basically prints logging in a, a json format so this is really important if at all you want to send your Uh, logs to external systems like uh, elk or splunk where now uh, elk and splunk can use our json formatted logs and create dashboards easily and not just this json logger provides some out of box capabilities so using json logger you can publish messages to messaging queues like uh, anypoint mq active mq etc uh, without doing much of a custom code so without with a very simple configuration you can uh push your formatted json logs onto messaging queues 
and then data masking so we all know how how much important the data masking is so if you are logging some raw payload and which payload and uh, the payload has really sensitive data now and you want to mask them and so here json logger provides out of box capability with a very simple configuration you can mask your data we'll discuss this about uh, about this data masking further and then there is a field called root container so this is one of the fields of our json logger where which actually prints exact uh, our xml file name and line where the log is printed so this can be really helpful while you are debugging any issues and there is something called trace point so trace point is basically you can flag your log position in your flow so basically uh, whether this log is placed before a transforming a message after a transforming a message or before any external calls after an external calls etc and then elapsed time so elapsed time is basically that uh, this indicate a time between our two log events a logging activity so this is really helpful again so if you want to know the response time from external system so let's say you are doing any external call in your flow and then you just want to know how long it took uh, to get a response from that system so you can put two loggers so one uh, before that external system one after that external system and you'll get the time lapse between these two without much of a coding so this is really important so these are few of the out of box capabilities of that there are there are again uh, there are uh, uh, some other capabilities as well we'll discuss further so how to use a json logger so so json logger is a custom logger uh, i mean custom connector which is not provided by molesoft so in order to use this we have to publish this json logger connector into uh, connector to our exchange and then then only we can use it so the best way to do it is so there is a public repository this is a git public repository you can directly access this and you can clone this so you can clone this and you can add uh, your distribution management uh, in your pom.xml and then add exchange uh, basically configuration in your settings.xml and if you uh, build this then it's automatically published it to your exchange so doing i mean this is the best way to do is because you can customize your connector also so let's say if there is a requirement for one of your clients you might want to and log a few more properties other than the default ones it provides so you can configure your you can uh, uh, customize your component to add those extra fields and then you can add extra configurations also if you want to so so once you publish your connector to your exchange then you can use it as any other connector so let's say you have published this json logger connector to your exchange then you can simply include this as a dependency in your pom.xml so once you include this dependency in your pom.xml and build your application so it automatically downloads that particular as a dependency and you should be able to see that in this mule palette so uh, once you see this in mule palette then of course you can use it uh, as any other connector you can simply drag and drop and place it uh, wherever you want it to and start using it so uh, these are few uh, json logger configurations really important let's discuss about this so left hand side if you see the message so message is basically if you want to log something non essential message a non essential data uh, onto your logger let's say which indicates uh, a little bit about the uh, about this logger basically like let's say request received a response returned now uh, maybe a call uh, before external uh, like some just normal messages and then uh, for some logs you might want to log the payload so content is a field where you can log your payload so this is basically a raw payload if you want to uh, if you want to log uh, so this is where you can do so if you see uh, there is some configuration so logger module stringify non json so whenever you install your json logger and start using it this is a default configuration that you see uh, so basically what does this mean is so if the payload is not a json so let's say the payload could be xml or some sometime it could be normal text so what it does it will print it as a normal text uh, if it is xml it will print uh, convert it as a normal uh, text and print it but if a payload is a json uh, so it will uh, print as a json format so we'll discuss this i mean we'll, uh, we'll discuss this further as well and then a trace point the trace point is basically if you want to indicate where exactly this logger is placed like as we just discussed now before a transforming message uh, before any external call after an external call etc 
And then priority, priority is a pretty standard one. Like it's a, what's the priority of this logger, whether it's an info and debug error, etc. And then category. So for now, just ignore this particular field. So we'll discuss this in a more detail uh, in a demo. So for now, just ignore this. Then if you see a JSON logger configuration, so here we have application name. So basically this prints the name of the application where you have uh, put this JSON logger. Uh, so uh, it is the application name you have deployed in your uh, cloud or if any, wherever you are deployed your application. And then application version, of course, and this is environment. So what is the environment, whether it's dev, prod, etc. And then here, if you see log location info, this is this exactly prints uh, the XML file name and number, the line number where this particular log is placed. And then uh, there is a something called disable fields. So for some of the logs, you might not want to log payload. So you just want a message. Uh, for some of the logs, you just want a payload, not a message. So you can use this field to disable it. So if you see, I have disabled contents. Content, what does this mean is, so this JSON logger doesn't print payload. It only print message and other configurations, but not payload. And then there is something called uh, content field data masking. So you might want to uh, log payload for some of your loggers, but uh, there is some really sensitive data which you don't want to uh, log as it is. You want to mask it. So let's say there is a data you have a user's email ID or maybe a mobile number or even some card details. You don't want to print them. So you can simply use this field to add those field names and uh, JSON logger simply mask, the, uh, mask those for us. So this, these are really important and very few uh, configurations of JSON loggers. And then uh, externalizing logs. So what is externalizing logs is basically if you want to uh, send your application logs to a third party centralized uh, logging systems like ELK or Splunk. Uh, so that is basically externalizing logs. Now, but why do anyone want to externalize logs? So let's consider an e-commerce use case. So e-commerce business users definitely want to know if their important pages like checkout page, payment page, login page are unloading properly. And then uh, what is the session duration? So whenever user logs into uh, our application, and I mean, how long uh, the session duration is, and then the peak activity time. So what is the uh, basically uh, the time duration where the peak activity is happening on our website and then geolocation of the users. Uh, just to know, so from uh, which geolocation most of the users are logging in, and then if there are any errors to uh, monitor those. So this data is really important for um, uh, e-commerce business people. Basically, based on these, they can create their business strategies and execute them uh, effectively. How they can do it is uh, they can send all these application logs to a centralized system. So uh, nowadays, these centralized systems have become really popular, like Splunk and ELK. So if you send your structured logs, like JSON logs to these systems, so you can use their dashboards or you can use their uh, GUI to create different dashboards uh, by using uh, by really simple way. Now, like you can simply, in fact, you can even drag and drop these log fields and create your dashboards. So you can create different dashboards. You can analyze data in a better way. You can um, uh, plan your business activities and you can execute them uh, uh, effectively. So that's why external logs are really important and which has become really popular these days. And uh, how to external logs uh, using uh, log JSON logger? So there is a couple of ways you can uh, externalize your application logs uh, to these third-party system. One is, of course, uh, log forge appenders. That is one way you can do it. But unfortunately, all environments doesn't support doesn't support log forge appenders, and um, uh, so there are few restrictions as well on that. So that's why JSON logger has provided. Uh, this is another options where you can. Now send your particular uh, application logs to external system. So how you can do using a JSON logger is uh, so basically you push your JSON log message onto a messaging queue. It could be any point MQ or any other JMS like active MQ, etc. So here for demo, we have used endpoint MQ. That's why I have given as endpoint MQ. So basically you push your JSON logger onto endpoint MQ and then you have another application which read messages from this endpoint MQ and publish it to external systems. Raul, uh, we have a few questions on this chat window. You can you take those questions? All right, sure, sure. I'm sorry. Uh, 
how do the json dot logger application name properties that are derived or do we need to create properties for them okay so these are basically uh, so there is something called app dot name you can directly use if you don't want to put it into properties and then use it so you can directly use a mule mules default property app dot name instead of json uh, logger dot application name so what i have done is so basically i have put these properties in our uh, properties file where i have uh, read it from app dot name so if you directly want to read from app dot name you can you can do that different between a trace point and category yeah so trace point is just to indicate where the logger is placed uh, in your application so it is basically uh, before a transfer message or after a transformation just to indicate where exactly this is placed so category is uh, let me check sorry yeah so these categories i will talk a bit more about it so basically categories so if there are multiple uh, so if you have segregated your logs into different different categories like application log a debug log or a business logs and uh, you want to segregate uh, your logs into different categories you can do and these category field uh, can be used uh, to enable and disable logs in fact uh, if you combine it with uh, priority so we'll talk about this in our demo so how can you combine both uh, priority and category and you can enable or disable your logs trace i'm not sure if this is a question what is logger scope how can be used Oh well, uh, logger scope. I'm I'm really sorry. I need to explore a bit on that. I'm I'm really not sure to be honest. Can you save the logs in CSV and export it? Yeah. So see, the thing is, yeah, what you can do is you can definitely do. So there is a way. One, you can directly use a log 4 appender using which you can send it to external systems. Or if you want to create a CSV, what you can do is again, you have to send it to some queue uh, messaging queue. And then you read from there and you can create it as csv and then uh, push it to any F S ftp server or sftp server if you want what are the dependencies that need to be added in pom.xml okay so this is uh, basically once you have published your because uh, json logger is a custom logger so custom component so you have to now clone the code and you have to publish it to first to exchange then you can use it so once you publish it to exchange you can simply add uh, that as a dependency so basically you add a um, organization id uh, in which organization you have published here this and then basically the connector name and version so like any other dependency if you have published um, your raml onto your exchange so a specification so you include that into your form so likewise you can simply add uh, your connector which is published to exchange as a dependency yes uh, the category logs we can use as a filter yes we can do that yep okay logger scope i think sai krishna has answered logger scope we can use to find the response time with then scope uh, I'm, I'm really sorry I'm not, I'm not aware of logo scope i have not used much but yeah uh, we, we need to explore a bit yeah he's right almost like you can place the logger scope like when you are st starting so you can place at the start and you can place at the end and you can calculate the time how much time it taken by task basically that particular task basically so so that is what a logger scope is basically so like if you want to create if you want to calculate the time for some uh, series of tasks right so that you can place in the logger scope it will give some timings basically it took like four millisecond or five millisecond to get exit perfect i i hope that answers your question okay i i hope i have answered all your questions so if first we can uh, proceed Yes. Okay. Sure. So, so this is where we were. So basically how we can externalize our uh, logs to external system. Uh, like, uh, so what we generally do is we send our JSON logger onto our messaging queue. 
So because JSON logo provides out of box capability. So you need not to do any uh, custom code to be honest with a very simple configuration. You could push all your messages to external queues. It could be any point MQ or any other JMS. And then you have a, uh, you create a mule application which reads messages from this queue and push it to external systems. So what we typically do is so let's say we have a project where we have multiple mule applications. So we push all those uh, logs from these multiple applications onto a single queue. And then we have a separate mule application which reads messages from this queue. And if you want to do any uh, extra formats uh, before pushing to external queue, you can do that in this app and then you can push it to external queue. So here having a ex uh, separate app to read from this queue and pushing to external queue has few advantages. So you can control uh, load to this external system. So you can read uh, messages, uh, you can configure it, maybe read few messages per second or whatever you want to configure it. You can do that and you can, if you want to format it to a different, uh, uh, I mean, if you can format messages before sending it to external system, you can do this in the app. Um, so how can we send the JSON logger into any point MQ? So JSON logger provides a really out of box capability and you need not to do any custom code. So this is really simple configuration. So if you go to JSON logger and see the destinations tab, so here you have option to choose from. So like you can choose AMQ, AMQP or JMS. So based on your requirement, uh, based on your availability, you can choose any of these and then you can configure the configuration and that's it. So once this is done, so whenever request uh, flows through your JSON logger, it automatically push to uh, the queue. So once a message is pushed to queue, then of course we have a separate uh, mule application which reads messages from this queue and then converts into any format uh, whichever the end system is. So here we are using a ELK system. So I have just formatted into ELK format and then pushing it to the external systems. So once you push your message to ELK system, so ELK uh, provides something called Kibana. Uh, so, uh, so using Kibana, you can create different dashboards. So for demo purpose, what I've done is I have created a really simple dashboard. So this dashboard is basically indicates number of requests on the particular time. So this is just for um, a demo. I have created a simple dashboard, but we can create multiple dashboards using this uh, Kibana. So you can use our logs or be using different properties. You can create different dashboards. So next thing is demo so i have put together a small demo so which demonstrate all this so let me quickly go through the demo but before that if we have any questions is json logger synchronous if the configure external queuing system is not able will json will fail to scope the transaction yes json logger is synchronous if the Yes, it does fail, yeah. But if you want to make it asynchronous, you can you can always put it in asynchronous scope. Okay. Any other questions before demo? Okay. Let's get into the demo. Uh, for demo, what I've done is I have created two really simple applications. One is external JSON logger test and one is Elasticsearch POC. So this external JSON logger test is, um, and this is the application where we have configured our JSON logger, which pushes, which push our JSON log formatted logs into any point MQ. And then we have Elasticsearch POC. So this API where uh, we have a subscriber which read messages from AMQ and push it to ELK. So first let's uh, go through this particular app. So before getting into actual queue, uh, let me show you some configurations. So you, here, if you see, we have multiple JSON logger configurations. So one for application log, uh, debug log, and then for business log. So the idea behind this is, so what we have done is we have segregated our logs into three different types. So one is uh, application log, uh, debug log and business log. 
so so you might want you might not want to send all the logs to the external system so you might want only few logs to send them uh, so uh, so here uh, business logs are something we want to send to external systems and application logs is basically this is to track a transaction like a flow entry a flow exit a request received a response return etc and debug log is something uh, as a developer you might want to log any specific uh, specific uh, information just to not debug any errors so let's say uh, id of a particular uh, particular request or you might want to log a payload size etc so then you can use the debug logs and then business log is something uh, so we want to send this business log onto external system where we can create a dashboards so this business logs can be placed strategically with a, a proper information which can be used to uh, create different dashboards so even in business uh, business logs uh, i have two configuration one is without payload and one is with payload so without payload is basically you might want to log something and you don't want payload in it so you just want to uh, log a message and then uh, other configurations like what is application name and where it is placed etc and you might want some business log with actual payload so that's why we have two different configurations so if you see business logs only business logs have this external destination configurations like amq url client etc but other two the application log and debug they don't have any uh, external destinations so so this segregation is just to you know make sure we have different uh, segregation of our logs and uh, the particular logs to send to external and uh, we can enable and disable these based on our environment and requirement let's say probably in uh, in production you might not want application and debug logs because uh, logs can really slow down your application and sometimes even crash it so what you can do is you can disable application and debug logs in production and you can only enable business logs and maybe in uh, down uh, like uh, the other environments like in a qa let's say so it's in a testing uh, testing phase and uh, as a developer you will be active in your testing phase so basically uh, you might want to log debug logs and application log just to uh, check the errors and track them and fix the issues so there you might not want business logs so we can we can do this enable and disable these logs based on our requirement using uh, priority and category uh, these are two fields of json logger i'll show you how so again uh, so this is a very small flow that i've created so this is just a scheduler based now here i have uh, used all these different type of logs so application logs are basically to log flow start and flow end and then there is a debug log which is just printing a request id and then business logs or something i want to send to external systems so this business log 2 is basically response return i want with this with payload and then business log 1 so we just print a request id this is without payload i don't want payload in it so if you see for all these different logs the priority is always debug and then category for business is business Uh, different categories we have for application and business so i'm just deriving this from properties file so if you see the common properties file i have uh, put different types application uh, application logs for application and then debug and business and then uh, as we were saying uh, so one of the questions was so can we derive this application name directly from mule property yes we can do so you can directly use this app dot name and you should get your application name uh so the the reason behind it is the why the all these logs are the debug is uh, again the we don't want to print all the logs all the time so what what we can do is using this category and priority we can enable or disable logs so how we can do this is so so this is one of the application that i have deployed so the one that i have just shown so here if you see settings in this logging tab i have only enabled uh, business logs so uh, the priority here the debug and then business logs enabled so whenever uh, this application runs or request comes so only business logs will be print but if you want application or debug log as well so what you can do is you can add one more row here debug and then application logs when those were also printed so so just to have this kind of um, uh, flexibility to enable or disable logs based on our requirement so uh, we can use these priority and category and do that so so this application basically does nothing so whenever you run a scheduler it prints all the logs uh, and uh, we have as configured external destination to business log 
so whenever request goes through this particular log uh, the message will be sent to external log uh, external uh, queue and then we have another application so this is really simple application again uh, so which basically reads messages from uh, this queue so we have a subscriber so here if you want we can configure um, max local messages whether it's a prefetch or you want to put a polling so you can you can control the load onto uh, this particular end systems based on this and then you can convert into any format if you want before pushing it to external system so here i have done a very simple configure like very simple transformation so what is the timestamp message and then 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 i'm just pushing it to elk so this is just a http call where i am giving um, the elk elk ap url and the nagar configurations so uh, let me so i have deployed these applications onto cloud up just to test our, our demo so here we have two applications one is external json logger test so this is what uh, push message into uh, elk uh, sorry um, message onto external queue and then we have this elastic search poc basically this reads messages from queue and push it to elk so i have just this api has a scheduler and i have of course uh, disabled it by default because i didn't want to send messages uh, uh, unnecessarily so let me run this okay all right so if you see only two logs are printed that is business logs because i have only enabled these so that's why you're saying only business log so one more thing i said is so we have a so if you clone and publish our connector onto exchange we have a you know you can customize code as well so one thing what we can do is so of course we haven't done it but the one thing we want to do is we can do is so you might not want to lock business log at all so you you just don't want to print you just want to send into external logs so what you can do is here you can add an extra configuration so maybe somewhere here so you can add extra configuration let's say print so you can select it here as a true or false so if print is true then only this log will be printed in the uh, console or else it will simply send it to external logs external systems so that is something we can do of course we work on uh, we can modify our custom uh, connector code and then uh, push it to our exchange uh, so if you see we have enabled only business logs so that's why we're saying only two business logs printed here so we have another app which basically reads message from the queue and then push it to elk so let's quickly go to elastic uh, elk so this is uh, just a, a trial account that i've created for this demo so here actually you can uh, query your logs as well you can query the logs and check the logs as well so let me first quickly query and check our logs so there is api console where this is the api uh, so mule api logs is basically the index that we have created for our mule logs and then i'm sorting based on a uh, time stop in a descending order just to see our latest logs so here if you see uh, 27 16 6 this is gmt so just now we got two messages yeah so then again uh, the rest are the older ones so this is how you can query uh, the logs as well and but there is something called kibana which elk stack provides so using those you can create simple dashboards so i have already created one so very simple dashboard basically which indicates the number of uh, logs received so here in analytics if you go to dashboard so this is what i have created dashboard and then i have saved it if you want you can create multiple dashboards so this is really simple dashboard i have created so uh, we are checking only last 15 minutes so if you see at 17 6 we got two logs so this is just a simple and if of course it provides you you can uh, filter over different uh, timestamp and see different logs as well so yeah i mean this is pretty much like how to um use json logger and send it to external systems so let me see if there are any questions uh, 
Okay, I don't see any questions. So that was demo, like how to use our JSON logger and uh, publish uh, to external system. So let's talk about best practices. So these are few best practices uh, for logging and then externalizing logs using JSON logger. So while using these queues, uh, so what are some best practices that we can follow? So one is, of, uh, of course, uh, the implement structured logging. So implementing structured logging is really important because if you have this structured logging, then it's easy to read and then you can send those structured logs to external system, which can be used and create dashboards easily and then build the meaning and context into log messages. So whenever you're logging uh, anything, so it's 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 good to uh, have a building a meaning around that log message and give a context and then avoid logging non-essential sensitive data. So if you're, let's say if you're logging any payload and the payload has a really sensitive data, but like maybe a card details or mobile number, which you don't want to expose. So it's always uh, instead of uh, you, you altogether avoid logging them or you can mask them. So you use these best practices to avoid non-essential and sensitive data. And then use public subscribe model messaging services. So this is basically whenever you're externalizing your JSON loggers onto um, queues, so the best way to do is instead of using queues, you can use a publish subscribe model. So what is this is? So let's say in any point MQ, so we have something called exchange and then queues. So instead of directly publishing your message onto queues, so you, you, you can always use exchange. So, uh, so what happens is let's say in future a requirement comes in. So you want to send the same messaging logs to multiple systems. So then you need not to change your code. So what you just need to do is you need to create extra queue and then simply subscribe to this exchange where you're publishing your message and the same message will be sent to multiple queues. And then you can have an extra uh, mule API which reads from this new queue and convert into format or send it to anywhere you want to. And then adding DL queues. So this is a generally a best practice to add dead letter queues. Uh, so whenever you're creating a queues, it's always better to have dead letter queues. Uh, so where you can configure a number of times a message can be tried to push into external systems. And then uh, let's say the external system is down at a particular time. So then it tries the number of times which we have configured and then push that message into DLQ. So and whenever the system is up and running, so we can run our messaging replay services and uh, put this DLQ message back into the original queue and those will be processed as usual. Uh, so the, the, the reason using DLQs is, uh, so if you don't have DLQ, what happens is the, our application is keep on trying uh, processing these messages from queue, uh, but end system is down. So they'll try to keep on reading the messages. So that can obviously, uh, you know, uh, crash our API. So instead of we can have this DLQ, which tries few times, whatever times we have configured and put that message in DLQ. So like this, we don't lose our messages and we don't cause, uh, don't crash our API. And then we can, if you want, we can replay these messages as well. So these are few best practices, not all, of course, these are just few of the best practices. Um, so Jitendra, are you, uh, you want to go ahead with trivia? Yeah, like uh, I have, we have one question from Rahul. So, okay. how can we mask certain fields from the incoming payload uh, using okay. JSON? Okay. Yeah. Sure. So, so basically, you can use a data view to do that. Let's say there is a payload, and you can directly use dollar. So, let me show open that particular screen. Yeah, this is a screen. So here, so disable uh, here. Uh, we have a payload. So basically dollar is a payload. Okay, so you can access your payload using dollar dot something. So if it is a, a array, then you can use dollar dot dot and uh, you can access all other fields within the array. Or if it is a normal object and uh, with an object you have, uh, let's say name, uh, name, uh, email ID and mobile number and you want to mask email and mobile number. So you can, uh, you can, you can put it here dollar dot email comma dollar dot password uh, sorry uh, mobile number it automatically mask it so you can uh, you can use direct data view to access this payload and even like you can have a multiple properties using space separated basically yeah. yeah and also if you want to disable any field like you can make use of this disabled field basically okay so yeah. that particular field will be not get logged basically so you can make use of the disabled fields OK, 
Okay, I I hope answer that question. So you wanna so Jitan, you wanna go ahead with trivia or you want me to share my screen and yeah, like let me go. So sure. yeah. So guys, anybody sure. have any question? Yeah, no question. Okay, let me go. Three years.